Roussel was particularly influenced by the Russian school, by Stravinsky, uh, but also, of course, he was French. So you get this great exotic mixture of, of the French sound, driving rhythms, sort of Russian ballet dance influence. This is the second part of the ballet, which is, you know, Ariadne is, finds herself abandoned on an island. Then she meets Bacchus and she's uh, sort of seduced gradually. And then there's a big, uh, big party at the end. So it's got a really tremendous build to the finale. And uh, it ends with she and Bacchus, you know, enjoying some wine on the island. And it's a very happy ending. Uh, and all together, it makes for a really dramatic, impactful opener for this concert. The Paganini variations of Rachmaninoff are, you know, they're a staple in the repertoire. And the whole thing, the way it uh, is designed, it starts more simply and then gets more and more complicated as it builds toward the end. Uh, and also the, the tempo, the pace quickens. Uh, and then at the, at the center of it all, you have a virtuosic piano piece. Olga's been here uh, several times. She did a recording with us, which was uh, very well received, and we're always happy to see her back. Rachmaninoff himself, of course, was a great piano virtuoso. Uh, and I, I cannot wait to hear Olga uh, just blow these variations away. The second half, uh, we, we have two pieces that feature the chorus, so we're going to be working with the Rochester Oratorio Society again. Uh, and it's always a pleasure to work with them and with Eric. Uh, they do a wonderful job. Um, Paula Betsy and Dances, as you would think, uh, has a lot of driving rhythm again. Uh, see, it comes from the story where Prince Igor was captive uh, and uh, he was he's being entertained by, uh, by his captors' slaves, and so it starts out, uh, you know, with a little bit of nostalgia and melancholy for his homeland, but then it turns into sort of a raucous party by the end of it. And having the chorus is a real thrill because I've done this piece before without the chorus, and it's great. It's very dynamic for the orchestra, but uh, having the voices involved just gives it that extra punch. Daphnis and Chloe is also um, rooted in mythology. Daphnis and Chloe being the main two characters, and this is, uh, again, a portion of a larger work of ballet. Uh, and one of the one of the most uh, fantastic features is, is Ravel's depiction of a sunrise. It opens. It's very eerie. It's very murky. It's very mysterious. You know, like just uh, dew falling off leaves, or you know, the early morning hour kind of vibe. Uh, but then you get this glorious, radiant sunrise in, in the orchestra. But having the chorus involved too just gives it that extra, extra little flavor, that extra color, and makes the whole soundscape just uh, really, truly ravishing. It's hard to believe that we're at the end of uh, my first full season as music director here, and I have to say it's been it's been glorious. The uh, the orchestra has just played tremendously, so beautifully, so virtuosically, with such passion and energy, and I've felt that return from the audience uh, all year long, and so. Uh, we celebrate the end of a first uh, season together and we look forward very much to next season and, and hope that everyone will join us and continue to share the great gift of music here in Rochester.